Ooh, a Sea of Thieves video. Haven't done one of these since, like, that long. When Season 6 launched, it added in the Ghostly Sea Forts, which are new locations for pirates to plunder and pillage. But how do you handle these strange new structures, and how can you be sure to get the most loot out of them? I'm Jamie Latour, and I'm going to show you around these forts so you can fight some ghosts on the Sea of Thieves. Before you sail to one of these sea forts, make sure you pick up a storage crate from a Merchant's Alliance vendor at whichever outpost you've loaded in at. Then you can set a course for one of the six sea forts located on your map. There are two forts in each region except for the Devil's Roar, which thankfully means you don't have to worry about being blasted by volcanoes. You've got the Mercy's End and Traitor's Fate fortresses in the wilds, Ancient Gold and Old Brinestone fortresses in the Ancient Isles, and the Royal Crest and Imperial Crown fortresses in the Shores of Gold. All of these sea forts function in a similar way, with the only real differences being cosmetic. When you sail to a sea fort, you'll immediately be fired at by cannons. These forts are pretty terrible shots, but be prepared to repair your hull on the off chance that they actually hit your ship. Pull up, park your boat, get on the fort, and phantoms will appear to do battle with you. You'll have to fight waves upon waves of phantoms, and the amount of people in your crew will determine how tough these waves will be. It's a good idea to have a blunderbuss equipped as an up-close blast from that will typically wipe out any phantom in your way. Don't worry about running out of ammo, as these phantoms will drop plenty of it, and there are ammo boxes located around the fort. After you deal with about eight waves of phantoms, the Sea Fort boss, aka the Captain of the Fortress, will appear. He's a bit tougher than regular phantoms, but only because he has more health than the others. Keep shooting him or whacking him with your sword, and eventually he'll be defeated, which means that the fort is yours! He'll drop a fortress treasury key and you can now go to the bottom of the fort and unlock the treasury to get plenty of phantom loot. This includes Chests of the Damned, Skulls of the Damned, and Ashes of the Damned, along with a whole bunch of regular loot. You can find even more treasure by opening storage chests, cabinets, and other compartments around the fort. Inside of those, you can find relics, skulls, and small bags of gold, but what you should really be looking out for is another key called the Fortress Storeroom Key. This is stashed away in a random spot in the fort, so you really need to dig around for it. And before you ask, no, I don't know why this barrel appears to be haunted, it's just always been like that. Once you've found it, you could go to the top floor of the fort and unlock the locked room up there for even more loot. Once you've cleared out the Phantom Riff Raff, you could use the Sea Fort as a makeshift home base for you and your crew. You could cook four pieces of food on the stove, sleep in the bunk beds, use the map on the wall, refill your tankers with grog, and even fire the cannons at any ships that dare to get too close. These forts are usually stocked to the brim with food, cannonballs, and other supplies, which is why I told you to bring that storage crate. You could fill that up with all of the fort's goodies, and you'll never want for supplies again, or at least until the end of your current play session. Finally, there's a list of commendations related to sea forts that you can get, and some of them are pretty easy, like sharing a bunk bed with one of your shipmates. For more Sea of Thieves news and guides, chart a course to thegamer.com. Thanks for watching, and enjoy your newly plundered phantom booty.